गाइस वेलकम टू अन अकेडमी माय नेम इज राकेश गोयल यू कैन फॉलो मी ऑन अन अकेडमी लर्निंग ऐप वे यू कैन सी ऑल माय कोर्सेज ऑन गेट एंड इंजीनियरिंग सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशन इन दिस लेक्चर वील कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन ऑन फोर ईयर ट्रांसफॉर्म दैट वी स्टार्टेड इन द प्रीवियस क्लास एंड गाइज इफ यू लाइक दिस कोर्स देन डोंट फॉर गेट टू रेट रिव्यू एंड शेयर दिस वीडियो यू कैन ऑल्सो सब्सक्राइब टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल थैंक यू so let's continue our discussion on fourier transform so in the last lecture we derived the fourier transform of the impulse function and it came out to be 1 that is the impulse function contains all the frequencies from 0 to infinity now let us try to understand some very important properties of fourier transform which we'll be using while analyzing our various modulation techniques guys this lecture will be very much important for understanding the various types of modulation techniques so i'll recommend that you must understand each and every aspect of this video clearly so let's start first of all with the duality property of the fourier transform so it states that if the fourier transform of a signal small xt is capital xf then the fourier transform of the capital xt signal will be nothing but small x of minus f that is just the inverse of this function xt inverse or the time reversal of this function in the frequency domain so we have calculated the fourier transform of impulse function as 1 so the fourier transform of 1 comes out to be del of minus f which will be nothing but del of f because the impulse function is an even function that is del of minus f is equal to del of f so the fourier uh, transform of this function which is one for at all times is nothing but a frequency component present at zero which is quite evident because you can treat it as a dc signal because it is constant everywhere and the dc component does not have any frequency associated with it that is it is only its frequency is zero that's why we get only an impulse at f equals to zero now let us understand one more important property of the fourier transform which is the frequency shifting property which we will be extensively using in our coming lectures so it states that if the fourier transform of a signal xt is xf and if we multiply xt with e to the power j 2 pi f not t then our frequency domain signal gets shifted by f not or gets delayed by f not and it is written as xf minus f not that is it shifts on the right hand side and if we multiply xt by e to the power minus j 2 pi f not t then it shifts to the left or we can say that the frequency uh, domain signal gets advanced by f not frequency and it is represented as x f plus f not and the important way to remember this result is this that if you have plus f not over here then you will get minus f not over here and if you have minus f not over here then you will get plus f not over here that is they are always opposite of each other so this will help you in remembering this result now let us with this property now let us calculate the fourier transform of cosine function because in our modulation techniques we will always use our carrier as a cosine function so it will be very much important for us to know its frequency uh, spectrum or its fourier transform so we can derive it as follows as we have already seen the fourier transform of 1 is nothing but del f so the fourier transform of e to the power j 2 pi f not t will be del f minus f not that is an impulse at f equals to f not and the fourier transform of e to the power minus j 2 pi f not t will be del f plus f not that is it will get advanced by f not time and we know that cos 2 pi f not t is nothing but e to the power j 2 pi f not t 
plus e to the power minus j to pi f naught t divided by two. So using the linearity principle, we can obtain the Fourier transform of this as nothing but del f minus f naught plus del f plus f naught divided by two. And this is nothing but cos two pi f naught t. And if you multiply it with by a, so our Fourier transform will become a upon two del f minus f naught plus del f plus f naught. Now let us try to plot this spectrum in the frequency domain. So here, as we can see, we have an impulse at f equals to f naught, and this del f plus f naught represent an impulse at f equals to minus f naught, and the amplitude of both these impulses is a upon two. So to quickly draw the frequency spectrum of a cosine signal which has a frequency f naught and an amplitude a, just draw an impulse at f naught and an impulse at minus f naught with amplitude just half of that of the cosine signal. So if we have, uh, if you have to draw the frequency spectrum of a signal say a cos 2 pi f1 plus f2 t, then we will have an impulse. Of magnitude a by two at f1 plus f2 frequency and an impulse at minus of f1 plus f2 frequency of amplitude a by two. So this is how we can draw the frequency spectrum of a cosine function. Now let us understand one more important pro property, which is called as the modulation property of the Fourier transform, and this is of the utmost importance when uh, we are analyzing the various modulation techniques. So it is nothing but just an uh, extension of the frequency shifting property. So as we have seen, multiplying xt by e to the power j to pi f naught t will give us x f minus f naught in the frequency domain and multiplying it with by e to the power minus j to pi f naught t will get x f plus f naught. And in modulation, you multiply our signal xt by the carrier which is nothing but the cosine signal. So we we'll, must know what we will get at the output. So to get the cosine signal we just add these two terms and divide by 2 because e to the power j to pi f naught t plus e to the power minus j to pi f naught t by 2 will be nothing but a cosine signal cos 2 pi f naught t. So to obtain that we just add these terms and divide it by 2. So we will get xf minus f0 plus xf plus f0 divided by 2. So this is the Fourier transform of a signal xt when we multiply it with a cosine signal. That is it the original uh, Fourier transform gets shifted by plus f0 and uh, minus f0 and then we divide the summation of them by 2. So now let's try to plot this spectrum in the frequency domain. So if the frequency spectrum of the signal xt looks something like this, that is it spreads from minus fm to fm and it is zero elsewhere, then the spectrum of xt into cos 2 pi f naught t will be just shift this pulse by f naught in the right hand side which will give us xf minus f naught, shift this uh, signal by minus f naught or advance it by uh, f naught on the left hand side and this will give us xf plus f naught and then divide the amplitude by 2. So here we will get on shifting by f naught here we will get f naught over here and f naught minus fm over here and f naught plus fm over here. Similarly here we will get minus f naught minus f naught plus fm and minus f naught minus fm and the amplitude being a by 2. So this is the Fourier transform of a signal xt when we multiply it with a cos 2 pi f naught t given the frequency spectrum of signal xt is this. So this is it from this lecture guys. If you have any questions then do write it in the comment section below. You can also follow me on an academy at this link. Thank you.